Okay, guys, let's begin this walkthrough. So, number one, part A. Write down the inequality shown on the number line. So, the best way to do this is always write x first, yeah, because that's what we're dealing with. And we ask ourselves, all right, so where is the ball? The ball is at minus 3, and it's not shaded in, so we don't include it. And we can see that the line covers all of these numbers bigger than minus 3. So, that means the values that x could take would be bigger than minus 3. And that's our answer. Now, part B, solve this inequality. All right, so when you solve an inequality, just treat this sign over here like an equal sign, yeah? So just imagine it was 4y minus 13 equals y plus 8, okay? But instead of the equal sign, you can just keep it as the inequality. Now, to solve this one, we should move all the y terms to the left and the number terms, i.e. the non-y terms, to the right. So to move y across, it's a positive y. Move across the equal sign, you subtract y. So 4y take away y is 3y, and then moving minus 13 across, you go add 13. So 8 plus 13 is 21. And therefore, to, to solve this equation here, you, go, you just got to isolate the y from the 3. So you got to divide 3 across. And doing so, you got y less than equal, 21 divided by 3 is 7. And that's it. y is less than equal than 7. All right, number 2. Show that this equation here equals the right hand side. So what we have to do is simply resolve this one without using a calculator and somehow make it look like this result here. So to do this, the first thing we need to know about adding or subtracting fractions is that we must always have common denominators. And that is these values here. They have to be the same. Now to make it the same, and before we even get there, we should first change mixed numbers which look like this into improper fractions. So single fractions. So let's do that right now. So for 5 and 2 thirds, the easy way to do it is to simply multiply the whole number with the denominator, 5 times 3, and add it to the top. So 5 times 3 is 15, add 2 is 17, and 17 over 3, minus, same thing applies, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 11, uh, plus 3 is 11. And that's over 4. So since we got that done, all we need to do now is make common denominators. So we ask ourselves, all right, how can we make both these digits the same? Well, the trick is, is to multiply them by what they don't have. So because we go, because this is over 3, you should multiply up and down by 4. Because it's over 4, we should multiply up and down by 3. So we just pick the opposite numbers. And doing so, if we times up and down by 4, we're going to know for sure we're gonna get, they're both going to be over 12. So this means we're going to have 17 times 4, and that's going to give us 68. And 3 times 4 is 12. And just to be clear, they're both over 12, yeah? And 11 times 3 is 33. And now we just tidy up. So we've got 68, take away 33. That's going to give us 35 over 12. And now the last step is to change this into a mixed number. Well, what you could do, you can just smash in your calculator right now. You could even do this in your calculator. This will give us this result. And then you can use your Casio calculator to shift it to a mixed number. But if you're not sure, we can just say, all right, 12 into 35 goes exactly 2 times and you get a remainder of 11. So you could just copy it straight out. And that's it guys, this question is done. Alright, for this question I shrunk it so I can fit everything in one page. But let's have a look. It says that we need to complete the table of values for this equation right here. And here's our table. Okay, so this is so easy. So all you have to do really is just replace your x values with whatever value it is. Just put it all in the calculator this equation and then you should get a y value in return. So for example, let's plug in minus 1, yeah? So we have y equals 1 plus 5. Now instead of x, we're going to replace it with minus 1. And I always recommend you wrap it around, replace the layers and wrap it around in a nice bracket. And then minus, minus 1 squared. And then putting this in the calculator, you should get a result of minus 5. And that should go here. And then you do the same for each value. So for 1, you replace these terms here with 1. So you get 1 plus 5 times 1 minus 1 squared. And here you should get just a result of 5. And doing again for 4 and 6, you should get 5 and minus 5. And that's it. This part will be done. Now as for part B, it says on the grid, draw the graph of what we just found for the values of x between minus 1 and 6. In other words, plot all of these coordinates in, yeah? Oops, why did I rub it out? 5, 5, 5, minus 5. So let's plug them in, yeah? So we've got first thing, minus 1 and minus 5. That basically tells us that at minus 1 on the x, we're going down to minus 5 on the y, which is here. 
And the next one, 0, 1, we had 0 on the end. 1 here, go up to 5, and so forth. 2, 7, 2 up to 7. I'm going to speed this up a bit now. Now, at this stage, we're going to connect it. So here you go, do this freehand, yeah? So do not use a ruler, because it's going to be a curve, yeah? So to do this, it's kind of hard. You're going to curve it like this. Okay, not bit kind of like that, and then, but you got to make sure it, you cut through every single corner. So, sh hold on. So like that. But anyway, have a go, yeah? <laughs> it, should, it should look a lot better than that. All right, number four. So ABC and DEF are similar triangles. So similar means they are this pretty much <laughs> the same triangles, but proportionally bigger, yeah? So whatever one length is, is because it's been scaled upwards, yeah? And same thing applies to everything else. Now, part A, work out the length of DE. So DE would be this side, which we're going to call X. Now, the easy way to do this is to basically look at two similar lengths. In other words, looking at 16 and 40 and asking yourself, how many times bigger is 40 to 16? Well, a quick way to do it is to just divide them, yeah? So in your calculator, you write 40 by 16. And in doing this, you should get a scale factor of 2.5. So this means that every single length here has been increased or multiplied by 2.5. Now to work out x, then we do the same thing. So we've got 12. Since we know our scale factor is 2.5, we're gonna just multiply onto 12. So 12 times 2.5 should give us 30. So 30 centimeters. Now for the last bit, it says that the area of triangle DEF is 525 centimeters squared. Okay. Find area of triangle DEF in meters squared. Okay, that's that's easy. So there's nothing, you don't need to do no similar triangles or nothing. Cool. All right, so all you have to know, to go from centimeters squared to meters squared, well, before that, to go from centimeters to meters, we need to know that we need to multiply this or divide this by 100. Okay, so there's a scale factor of 100. This means going from the squared version, you got divided by 100 squared. If it was cubed, you would divide it by 100 cubed. So in other words, in our calculator, we're going to write 525 centimeters squared divided by 100 squared. And when you do that, you should get an answer of 0.0525 and meter squared. That's it. Not much to it, guys, yeah? And that's number four done. All right, my favorite question. Factorize x squared minus 5x minus 36. All right, not bad. Not bad. So to do something like this one, it's just straight up easy, yeah? All we do is first and first to realize that this needs to be in this following form, which is a double bracket form. That's what we want it to be. And to do so, we just look at the last digit, 36, and we write on all the pairs of numbers that multiply to make 36. Well, the first one I can think of would be 6 times 6. Another pair would be 1 and 36. Now, is there any other pairs? Yeah, there's also 4 times 9, so 4 and 9. And I think, I think that's about it for now. Yep, that's about it. So now the next step is to basically pick one of these pair numbers that have a sum or difference of minus 5, yeah? Don't worry about the minus 36. Think of something that has a, a sum or difference of minus 5. And, and the one I can think of right now would be um, the third pair. Which, and the only way to get a difference of 5 if you did minus 9 and plus 4. And that's it, guys. You just put it in the brackets. So you're going to get x minus 9, x plus 4. And just to be sure this is right, you can also see that minus 9 times plus 4 gives us minus 36. And minus 9 add 4 gives us minus 5. And that's it, guys. That's 5 done. All right, so after the easy one, now we've got a kind of a longer looking question. So let's check out number 6. It says here that there are some ice lollies in the freezer. The flavor of each ice lolly is banana or strawberry or mint or chocolate. <laughs> Man, don't these guys ever use commas? Julius takes at random an ice lolly from the freezer. The table below shows the probabilities that the flavor of the ice lolly that Julius takes is, bana is banana or strawberry or chocolate. And don't forget, there's also mint. You kind of forgot what to say. Work at the probability that the flavor of the ice lolly that Julius takes is either strawberry or mint. When they say either strawberry or mint, this means you got to add up the probability of strawberry and whatever mint is. Now, the question is, what is mint? Well, one thing we always need to know about probabilities is that the sum of all the probabilities must always add up to 1. And that's if you add them up, yeah? So basically, let's just call mint uh, M for sake of it, yeah? This means that all these values, you just add them up. So 35 plus 32 plus 12, and then you 
put that in decimal, so there's 0 0.0 all of them. 1 minus all of that, and m should be, min should be 0 0.21 left. So just double checking that, yeah? 0 0.35 plus 0 0.32 plus 0 0.12, that should give you something. 1 is 0 0.21. That's min. And therefore, the question says, work at a probability that the ice lolly could be either strawberry or min. And since strawberry is 32, the answer would be 0 0.21 plus 0 0.32 should give us 0 0.53 and that's it all right number seven so a football team played 55 games each game has one drawn or lost okay so you've got three different things going on <clears throat> that's so okay so the number of games won two so this is the ratio to the number of games drawn to the number of games lost is six three two so this means that for every six games won you expected a draw three times and lose two games so that's for this particular team work out how many more games the team won than the team lost all right cool so this is a very standard ratio question yeah so what they're trying to say here with this ratio pass we must always add up all the ratio parts so adding up six three and two this should give us 11 parts now this tells us that 11 parts must equal the sum of the games so we have 55 games and that should equal 11 parts now all you want to do is just work out how many one part is. <coughs> oh. So to get one part, just divide what? 11 across. So you get to get one part. 55 by 11 is 5 games. This means to get these parts, 6, 3 and 2, just times it by what you need. So let's see. To get 6 games, so 6 parts, so 5 times 6 is 30. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 5 is 10. That's it. And just to be sure this is all right, if you add all this up, it should equal the number of games now. 30 plus 15 is 45, plus 10 is 55 parts, so 55 games. Now the question says, work out how many more games the team won than team lost. And remember, one is here, is, is, is this part, and lost is here. So they won 30 games, lost 10, 30 take away 10 is 20 games difference, yep. Yeah? That's it. This is the end of your question. And finally, number eight. So we're given two different values for A and B, which are in terms of prime factors. Okay. Part A tells us to find the highest common factor of A and B. Highest common factor, which is a really nice trick. Just look at the word factor. So if you look at three squared, three power four, and so on, all they wanted, all they want you to have is simply what, do, what can they both have at least? So we know that this first term, 3 squared, there's two sets of 3s, but there's four sets of 3s here. We know that both A and B both have at least two pairs here, so 3 squared. So we're just, we're just trying to find what they both have at least. The next term, 5 to the power of 4 and 5 to the power of 3, they both have at least 3 each. This has an extra one, so just 5 to the power of 3. Next term, they both have at least a single 7, so it's 7. And finally, 11. Well, A doesn't have 11, so there is no common factor. So that's it. This would be your end result. And you don't have to expand it. You can leave it like that. It doesn't tell you give it in ordinary, ordinary numbers or leave it in prime factors. So this is cool. Now, part B. Find the lowest common multiple of A and B. And again, the keyword here is multiple. And what I would do, I would rewrite this word as maximize. Yeah. So this is a keyword. When you think LCM, think M for maximize, not multiple. And all that tells us is that we do the same kind of thing. But instead of looking at the common factor, we look at the highest power of both. So this is 3 to the power 2. This is 3 to the power 4. The highest power is 4, so it's 3 to the power 4. Next one, 5 to the power 4 and 5 to the power 3. The highest power of both of them is 4. So again, we're just maximizing the powers, yeah? Next one, 7 and 7, where the highest power of both is 1, so it's just 7. And again, this, is, they ha this one has an 11, this doesn't have 11. So the maximum between 11 and not having 11 is 11. And that's it, guys. That's pretty much how you do both these questions. So, yeah, if you guys um, enjoyed this walkthrough, please give me a like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave me any comments. And uh, let me know if you have any questions on anything I've done so far. Anyways, thank you for watching as always. I appreciate you guys a lot. And I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.